Uh, we're going to speak on the verse, seventh canto, thirteenth chapter, verse thirty. The living entity tries to achieve happiness and rid himself of the causes of distress, but because of the various bodies of the living entities are under the the living entities are under the full control of material nature. All their plans in different bodies, one after another, are ultimately baffled. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Padaya Bhutali, Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namani. Namaste Saraswati Deve, Gauravani Pacharani, Namaste Shanyuari Bhaska Jade Sadharani. <clears throat> Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Adaita Gadadhar Sri Vasudhi Gopaktuman Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 As we have said before everyone is seeking happiness then the question arises, why is it we have distress? And the answer is because we do not require, do we do not seek in knowledge. We are meant for eternal blissful life with Krishna in his devotional service. This we naturally do when we recognize that we are part and parcel of Krishna and that we are meant for service to him. So long as one identifies himself as this material body, he is sure to suffer. As long one seeks only the pleasure and happiness of this material body, he is sure to encounter the laws of material nature of, and distress. The law of material nature is that every body which is born grows old. He suffers disease and he dies. No one can counteract these four principles of distress. The materialist makes many plans to counter them, but the reactions of his actions are always causes of distress. Instead, as Krishna's parts and parcels as his eternal servants. We are meant to engage in his service. If we do that, we are always successful, we are always blissful, we are always happy. As soon as we are victimized by material desires, we are sure to encounter distress. If one does not act for the satisfaction of Krishna, he is not intelligent. He does not know who he is. We are part and parcel of Krishna. We are eternal servants of Krishna. Of course, I'm sure almost everyone in this audience would say, I'm surrendered to Krishna then why do I sometimes encounter distress? The reason is because our desires are different than Krishna's desire. Krishna manifests his desire to every living entity in the present moment as it is. Now if I ask, are you always happy and satisfied and blissful with each and every present moment as it is, I'm sure not, we would not say we all are. But to the degree that we resist the present moment and its possibilities, we are sure to encounter distress because we are not surrendered to Krishna's desire for us. Krishna is the all-knowing, omniscient personality of Godhead 
who knows what is best for us. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, I am the seed-giving father of every living entity. Certainly the father desires the best for his child. When we welcome what Krishna has sent at every moment and thank him and say, thank you Krishna for now as it is. How do I use now as it is in the best way for your service and pleasure? The whole world accepts now as it is, but not in the same way, not with pleasure, not with thanksgiving. That is because they are forgetting they are Krishna's servant. A servant accepts what the master gives him. Krishna wishes the all living entities the highest benefit. And therefore what he sends to us is meant for our benefit. Sometimes a parent praises a child. Sometimes a parent rewards a child. Sometimes a parent punishes a child. But in all cases, the parent is the well-wisher of his child. The parent never does anything uh, spiteful. How much more the supreme parent, the perfect parent, Krishna, does only what is best for his child. Therefore, the surrendered child, the child who believes Krishna is all good, all perfect, and does everything in the best way possible, he is always blissful with what he receives in the present moment as it is. This is what pleases Krishna. When he sees the faith of a devotee, even in apparently distressful circumstances, he is very pleased. It is through such faith that we know Krishna more and more, that we see his perfection in everything, every act, in every circumstance. But let us not think that this, this means I can sit back and do nothing and simply let it happen. In that case, we are not a faithful servant. The servant is meant for service. And unless we use the present moment as it is for Krishna's service, we are not fulfilling our duty. So let us be very active in Krishna's service. If we do not know how to use the present moment for Krishna's service, let us ask him. Willing to do whatever he wants, confident he has a perfect plan, and patient to understand and persevere. The ball is in his court. It, Krishna is responsible to give us the intelligence how to use the present moment as it is for his service. Then the Lord says, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of thy Lord. Then the devotee is always happy. He is always content. He is always satisfied. Thank you very much. Anyone have a question? If there are no questions, it means you're convinced. <laughs> One question is there, Bhaktipad. One question from Mr. Auj, Raju Auja. He says that he's busy the whole day in his business. How can he perform devotional service? Yaseva. If he is engaged all day in his business, what is his object? Why is he engaged all day in business? Agar, agar ye sara din bhagavan ke karya mein lage rehte hain ya jo karya se business karte hain usko unka uska uddeshya kya hota hai? Naturally, for some profit. 
No one works without expectation of profit. वो एकमात्र लाभ के लिए कार्य किया जाता है कोई भी व्यक्ति बिना लाभ के कार्य नहीं करता है If you want to transform that work into devotional service you give the profit to Krishna then it becomes perfect devotional service You mean to say that uh, he has to how how you suggest that he gives to uh, gives uh, the profit to Krishna what are the suggestions Krishna is personally present in his temple Krishna is perfectly represented by the bona fide spiritual master so we can give to the cause of Krishna consciousness for the spreading of this knowledge because Krishna says no one is more dear to me than one who spreads this knowledge of Krishna consciousness any other question All right, thank you very much.